Let's take a look at some example problems for lesson 1.9 using the TI-84 calculator. Now, thankfully, the TI has some built-in features to work with weighted means pretty effortlessly uh, and weighted standard deviations and any other weighted calculation as well. And in fact, it's all located under one bare stats in the exact same place where we were working uh, earlier in the course. The only difference, when we go to one bare stats, you get two options in this menu that shows up to enter where the list of data is you're working with, and then also the frequency list. So if you just indicate that you have frequencies and another list, it will start doing weighted stats instead. So it's pretty straightforward. And let's take a look at some examples. So the first asks us to find the average daily balance for a credit card account that has a balance of $250 for 11 days, $309 for 15 days, and $105 for four days. So what I ask students to think about here is just to think of an actual calendar here so you can get an idea of how this would work. So you have the days of the week, and individual weeks of the month. Okay, so we have a balance of $250 for the first 11 days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So these first 11 days, the balance on this count is $250. So the average daily balance up to the 11th day is 250. But starting at that point, then for the next 15 days, the balance is $309. And the thing is, for each day that you add you know, another $309 balance, uh, the average balance increases slightly. All right, so the um, average balance being for the $309 for the next 15 days, uh, the way we would take that into account is either to add 250 11 times, 309 15 times, and then 105 4 times. And I think you could see how this could actually fit pretty nicely into a frequency distribution. Because you have the individual balances, and those balances were specified over a range of days. And that number of days is like a frequency. So we can use this to calculate our uh, weighted mean. Now, uh, we certainly could use the weighted mean formula like we described in the class, or we can take advantage of the calculator. And I recommend using the calculator just so you don't make a slight arithmetic error. It's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, you would just go into your list editor. so. Uh, press stat, and then uh, the list editor is the first item, so press enter. And enter your uh, individual values of the balances into L1. And then you're going to put the frequencies, uh, so the number of days that those balances occurred in L2. Now when you press stat, and go over to calc and run one bear stats, just make sure you have noted that you have frequencies in the list L2. And if that's blank, uh, you can put an L2 there by doing second and two, and that'll put in an L2. And then when you press calculate, it will do weighted statistics for you. It will take care of all those more complicated formulas and handle it. So 260.17. And that value does make sense with the data because you know the minimum value here was 309 and the max sorry the maximum was 309 and the minimum was 105. So the average has to be somewhere between there, and that's what's happened. Okay, let's take a look at another example, one that you might be familiar with, uh, GPA. So we have a student here with some grades uh, in different classes. Uh, along with their credit hours. And the GPA is in fact a weighted mean of your grades per the number of credit hours. 
Um, and the credit hours included in the calculation is simply because if you have a class that uh, meets for four hours instead of three, it generally means you put more work into it and a grade in that class should weigh more heavily on your final GPA. So um, the problem with B grades, we want to use those as our individual data values, but they are qualitative. And because they're qualitative, we can't really use them as is. We have to change them into something that is quantitative instead. And since they are ordinal, you can actually take ordinal data and encode that with numbers. So for instance, I could say an F is worth zero points, D is worth one, C is two, B is three, and A is four. And these are known as the grade points. So that's why this is a grade point average, so GPA. So we just change all of our Bs to value three, the A's to value four, and the C's to value two. The credit hours act as frequencies in this case. So X data individual values will go into L1 and the frequencies will go into L2. So let's go back into the calculator and set that up. So stat calc uh, one bear stat, whoops, actually I need to enter my data first. So enter the data. Okay, since we have stuff in our lists, I'm going to highlight the name of the list, press clear and enter to clear those out. Okay, the individual grades will go into L1. And the credit hours will go into L2. Once that's in, we just need to run one ver stats. Um, it usually saves the list and the frequency list that you used on the previous uh, use of the function. So, uh, but just double check to make sure it's the appropriate list that you've plugged data into. Then press enter to run it. And we find the student's GPA is 3.12. So the GPA is the mean, which is 3.12. All right, and it does make a difference if you use the weights versus not using the weights. So make sure you're very careful as to whether you're we need to use it in an example or not. Um, so just make sure under each application you know whether you're supposed to be using a weighted mean or a regular mean. And there should be some sort of indication of a frequency somewhere if you're supposed to use a weighted mean. All right, next up here, this is probably another familiar thing to you. Uh, what is the final grade of a student who has a 75, 91, 188 on each of four exams, a 68 on the homework assignments, and a 92 on the final exam? If the average test grade makes up 65% of their grade, the homework makes up 10%, and the final exam makes up 25%. Okay, so I'm sure you've been in a class where this is the case. Uh, you have individual grade categories. So we have the exam average, uh, the homework, and the final exam. All right, then you have the grade on each of these and an indicated weight. So the weight is the percentage and it's acting like a frequency um, even though it's a decimal value, that's that's perfectly fine. It doesn't make any difference. So the exams make up 65% of the grade, homework is 10%, and the final exam is 25%. All right, this student had a 92 on the homework, 68, oh, I'm sorry, 68 on the homework, uh, 92 on the final exam, and then the exam average, we have a 75, 91, 188 on the individual exam. So we'll just need to quickly 
find the mean of those. So 75, 91, 188. Divide that total by 4, and we have an 88.5 uh, as the exam average. Okay, now the grades act as the individual data values. The weights are acting as frequencies, so these would go into L1, these into L2, and then we just run the one bear stats. So going back into my list editor, and uh, I'll just delete a couple and type over the ones there, that's fine. All right, then my weights, um, it doesn't mind a bit if you use weights as decimal values, so that's fine. And then you can run the one bear stats. Making sure, of course, to indicate that you have those weights as frequencies. When you press calculate, it will do everything it needs to and come up with the student's grade, which is an 87.3. So the grade is just the average there, which is 87.3. All right, the last example here is to find a sample mean and sample standard deviation for the frequency distribution. Now, I showed you at the end of the lecture a formula for calculating a uh, weighted standard deviation, but I didn't go through actually calculating it because I said just let technology do it uh, because technology does it pretty seamlessly here. Um, what we need to start off with is the uh, midpoints. So I need to get the midpoint of each of these categories to start off. So the midpoint of the first age range in this driver safety class is 20.5. And one thing that I notice is all the lower class limits are off by 10. So that means all the midpoints are going to be off by 10 as well. And that's going to be a lot easier to calculate than each midpoint separately. Now the midpoints are your individual data values, the number of people, within each age range is your frequency. So X goes into L1, your frequencies go into L2. And let's see here, just get started entering that data. So 20.5, 30.5, and so forth here. All right, and then in L2, those frequencies. Okay, once everything's in and you've double checked to make sure you've got the right values, uh, it's time to run one bear stats and just make sure you have the frequency list indicated. So then press calculate, it will do its magic and the mean reported is the weighted mean, so uh, I believe it was 38.1, okay. And the standard deviation, both standard deviations there are weighted calculations. It's just one is a sample standard deviation and the other is a population standard deviation. So you do still need to be able to choose the right one. In this case, it asks for a sample standard deviation, so we would use SX. So 15.6 is our value that we're interested in. 